Bless you, bless you, bless you. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, uh, this is Apostle Peter Daniel speaking to you now. Apostle Peter Daniel from Nigeria. You are watching me right now in heaven and hell live program. In heaven and hell live program. The one we used to do every Monday to Friday. Every Monday to Friday. I pray the Lord God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, today we want to go into the word of God. We want to break down some things that we needed to understand. The mystery sometimes, what is giving Christians an issue? Or let me say, let me, what is giving some churches an issue? We want to break it down so to a simply, uh, to a simple something, so that you can understand what God is saying in that place. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Please let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everlasting Father, we want to bless your name. We want to glorify your name. We want to exhort you for the grace, for the privilege, for your spirit, for your anointing in our life without glorified and exalted in Jesus' name. Our God and Savior, the internal rock of aging, we are asking you, Jesus Christ, that you will visit our life this morning. As we are hearing the message, you will release your anointing upon our soul. You will, you will open our eyes to see the things of the Spirit, to open our eyes to see the mystery of your word, open our eyes to see the, 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 the necessary, necessity of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. I hereby destroyed every Satan spiritual bandage in the name of Jesus Christ. You are loose in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that as you hear this message, the power of God will fall upon your soul. In Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Without wasting our time, today we want to talk about uh, what Jesus meant in his word when he was talking about uh, uh, he was given an instructions. I know it's something you already know, but probably you didn't understand. God has some things sometimes you might be reading the Bible but doesn't understand what that particular place is talking about. I want you to open your Bible to Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. I will read from here. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Be ye therefore perfect even as your father who is in heaven is perfect. Hallelujah. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father who is in heaven is perfect. The unmerited pastor is not even he. I've met many pastors which we have discussed together about this issue, about perfections. And this Ministers, we always tell me that, my brother, don't let us deceive ourselves. Nobody can be perfect. I've seen many Christians say the same thing. Nobody can be perfect. I've seen ministers saying the same thing. Nobody can be perfect. But is this statement true? Is it true? So we want to go into this message now to look at it, whether it is true or not. The ability of a Christian brother or a Christian sister saying it is not possible to be perfect. Huh. I think it's somehow dangerous. But before we talk about that thing, what does it mean to be perfect? When let me look, let me set an example. 
what it means to be perfect is let me give you an example you have a wife he cook a food for you by the time he cook the food for you you tasted the food salt is okay the mangi is okay the pepper is not too much the taste is wonderful the water is not too much in the food everything about that food is perfect what is necessary for the food to or the all the the the, 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 the ingredient they have using to make the food is all in that food by the time you eat it you know in food when you are cooking food every tradition has its own way of how they cook their food probably in your own tradition as that your wife cook it she cook it in a wonderful way exactly the way they cook it in your tradition to the level you begin to say ah where is this food be she's all this way in the time of that food you can say it is perfect somebody who cook like a professional you know in everything that we say professional and not a professional with carpenter you can say carpenter is a carpenter but when you say i am a professional you know that this person is a person who will, will do that work perfectly no mistake i remember a man of god say something precisely Pastor Yi Adeboy. He was saying something that they have a teacher, a mathematics teacher in secondary school. This mathematics teacher, whenever he gives them work to do, he said they are this particular set of people. And uh, Pastor Yi Adeboy was, uh, was part of them. I'm just using him as an example. He said, when this man, this mathematics teacher gave them work to do, and they came back, the first time they came back, uh, they get 70 over 100. He said, the math teacher said, you are not doing well. Ah. So they went and go and work hard. He gave them another work. They come back, they got 80 over 100. He said, the math, the, 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 uh, uh, their, their, their teacher said, you are still not doing well. Ha. He said, they go again. This set of them, I think they are three or so, according to what he said. They go again and go and they study harder. And they work harder. And this time around, they are surprised. They got 95% over 100. And they said, today, today, <laughs> our guy will he will be very happy. That is hey. And by the time they get to the math, mathematics teacher, the math teacher look at the books and they say, well, you are still not doing well. Say, ah, on top 95 point here, over 100. <laughs> okay, they have to go back again. They work this hard. They said, today we must get everything. And this time around, they got to 99, over 100. It's only one missing. And when they get to the mathematics teacher, they say, sir, today you'll be happy with us. Very happy with us, with the level we get to this time. And the mathematics teacher said, ah, in fact, you are very lazy. You are not doing really well at all. Say, ah, on top one missing. <laughs> and this time I ran, they went here. And they went to go work very hard. And with their with their working, they say, ah, no, 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 no. The teacher mark it and they mark it hundred, hundred. And they were like very already there, like very happy that the teacher we congratulate them with everything. They are expecting a lot of things from him. Ah, they were very, very happy. This particular boys, and the way he was part of them in secondary school. And by the time they get to this teacher. The teacher get there and said, and look at it and say, eh, hundred, hundred. But you are not doing well at all. He said, eh? Even on top hundred, hundred. He said, 
In fact, you are not doing well at all. They were now down. What is more than 100, 100 that you have collected? And you are saying you are not doing well. The time we are collecting 1970, you are not doing well. We still collect 100, 100. You are still not doing well. So they are forced to meet the teacher and say, Sir, Sir, yeah, we try our best now. We are working out. Now we just under the day. We are expecting you to say, ah, well done, my, 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 my son. Well done, my this student. You are saying you are not doing well. The teacher now said, you get under the in secondary school. You are happy. Why your mate is in university? And their mind, ah. Hallelujah. What am I bringing in that point? Is it possible for a Christian to live a perfect life? Or is Jesus trying to put us into kind of bondage? Is Jesus try, trying to put us in a load we cannot carry? Be ye perfect as our Father is perfect. When Jesus begins to tell you to compare yourself with God Almighty, and you know the perfection of God is forever perfect, to the essence that the Bible says, the most wisest of man, when our wives reach in fact it's like the foolishness to god the foolishness of god is more than the wiseness of man god doesn't have foolishness so i'm just comparing it so what it means is that there is no way we can be wise and got to just a single percent, a one percent of his wisdom. Now, and Jesus, our Savior, is telling us we are perfect as God is perfect. Is it possible? This is the kind of argument that the Christians, the pastors, are saying. Do you know that the same thing is what the devil is bringing to the mind of Christians whenever they want to commit sin? He said, do you think you can be perfect like God? I bet we are human beings. If we quote a scripture and tell you that the Bible said the grass will fall several times and rise again. He said, well, because God knows that we are human beings. But the truth, let me tell you the truth today. You can be perfect as God is perfect. No, the scripture says something. He said, Your righteousness is like a filthy rag. You must be perfect as God is perfect. And it is possible. It is not a body. The reason why it's possible is because. Jesus Christ, our Savior, will never tell you what is not possible to you to do. The Bible says something. He said, he said, he said bring your load here. Let me carry it. And you carry my own simple load. Because my whole load is not heavy. It's easy to carry. So the Lord Jesus Christ is giving us to carry is something we can do. Is something we can carry. It is possible for you to live a holy life. But how are you going to do it? That is where we are going to. Then he said, be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. It means if you are not perfect, you are going nowhere to heaven. I remember what uh, God told me, Jesus Christ told me when I went to heaven. When he took me to heaven about some years ago, when I was about to be sent back to the earth, he mentioned something to me. He said, 99.9% holiness. If you write it down, you understand what I'm saying. 99. 
99.9 holiness I hate. 100% holiness I want. That's a statement he called for me before he sent me back to this earth. That's the same way he just placed it. 99.9 holiness I hate. 100% holiness I, 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 I want. Then he sent me back. It means if you are a Christian, you are living a righteous life. You are living a only life. But in a very tiny area, you miss it. You are going to hell. That is what God is saying there. He ain't perfect as your God is perfect. It means if you are living a life of righteousness and holiness, but in a single area, you are not doing well, you are going to hell. That is what he's telling you. <laughs> As about this thing is hard, it's not hard. It's not hard. In simple area, in a single point, if you miss it there, you miss it all. If you look at James chapter 2, verses 10, open it. Let's read it together. I'm not going to quote it from the head. It's a powerful verse that needed attention. A powerful verse that needed attention a powerful verse that needed attention now open it to james chapter 2 verse 10 are you there He says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Wait. I don't think you understand what it means by saying one point. God supposed to say, listen to me. As we said, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one's law or in one area is guilty of all. It means that there's a probably if you commit fornication, you are going to hell. Or if you commit one sin, he said one point. Point means it might be your conduct. It might be when you are going into the service and you come late. Point me, coming late to the service, maybe one minute late, when they say you are starting by nine o'clock and you come be one minute after nine, it's, they call it one point. You know, it's not a, a raw scene that a man can say, a raw one, like sin of fornication, lost, ah, uh, you know, Steve, mother, this kind of thing. That area is a simple thing that you can come along at be one minute. God will overlook it. That's what he means by point. In one point. I don't know about other Bible, but this one is King James Bible. Old King James that Bible. What the Bible said here, he said, in one point. You are in the church, and the usher asks you to sit down here. And you did it. You said, "This place is dirty." That day, you went to go and sit another place. You have committed sin in one point. You are in the church. They ask you to sweep. You now say, "I'm wearing expensive clothes. I don't want to sweep." Somebody else go and sweep that. I'll be sweeping next time. You have offended in one point. 
empire street. If you die at that moment, you cannot make it ever. Are you here? Now, that's, I'm telling you what it means to be perfect. It means, now, if you are on your brain, when you see a lady, the first thing that comes to your mind is that this girl, I want to sleep with her. And you're like, ah, oh God, assuming I have opportunity, I will have do it and ask God for forgiveness. Listen, you, I will have do it and ask God for forgiveness. You have agreed to do it, but you say you will have asked God for forgiveness, but you will not do it. You see that statement? You have committed in a point. Do you see all this kind of sin you are doing? That you believe that is not nothing to you. It is a big offense to God. A big one, like a big offense. That when he's talking to you, his eyes will be red and blue. He said, ah, she is my tight and offering. Uh, the money, uh, the, my tight and offering is too much, it's too big. I will lie. Uh, Eh? I will not be paying that big amount of money. You now remove out of uh, 100, you now remove just 2%. You now send 98% of your tithe. I'm just making an example. Instead of you sending 10th 10, 10, 10, 10 of your income, you are now sending like ninth of your income. You remove one. You have offended in one point. It's air fire straight. to live a holy and a perfect life. God will examine your life. He will examine your heart. He will examine your speech. He will examine your character. He will examine your behavior. If you are a type of person that whenever you have, you are, you are angry, your eyes used to squeeze against the person. You might not talk with us will be squeezed against that person. Instead of you to make a resolution, your eyes will sweep against that person. The moment your eyes is squished, you are angry inside, is squished. If you die at that point, you are going to hell. It is also classified as one point. One point. The kind of life God is asking you to live. It's a kind of life that even in your speech, they will not be seen there. Do you know that even me that I preach, whenever I preach, I still go and pray and say, God, that if I have said anything that is wrong, forgive me. Do you know that? Because during my talking, I might say something mistakenly and I'm not aware. There are many times that a, a person somebody will be talking and he will say something by mistake. And you will not know he says something by mistakes. He said in one point. In one point. In one point. He didn't say two. One, just one is enough. To take ones to hell. In one point. It can be in the area of husband and wife. Listen to me. Ah, uh, my dear, listen to me. Uh, my dear, is there, sir? Uh, please help me to go and buy something in the market. Now, he said, now, listen to the meaning of perfection. No? Perfection, no? He said, now. Quotation, now. Right now. Now. You now begin to do other things. You say, I will come and do it very soon. I will let me finish with what I'm doing. Dear, I said, help me to go and buy this thing on time. In your mind, you now said, about two minutes later, I will go. If you die, that moment you are going to hell. Because God, we can't eat as an act of disobedience to your husband. 
we are talking about one point perfection if you tasted a soup and the soup is remaining small salt it means the food is not perfect ah this one is hard okay how are we going to live our life you will live your life Do you know that sometimes, even me, if somebody do something that makes me unhappy, I'm not angry. Maybe the person makes me unhappy. Inside my heart, I will be thinking that, hope I have not said by not unhappy. I'll be checking myself that, hope I have not said. What did I do that make him do that? Then I will find excuse on my heart to give to that person that the person is a, he didn't intentionally do it. He said he didn't know. So before the person comes, self I don't forgive him. Because I know that if a man die with such a thing in his heart, he's hellfire. I have an evangelist. Listen to me. Listen to me. I have an evangelist who God took to hellfire. His name is called Evangelist, uh, uh, Evangelist uh, uh, John. It's not the one I play in YouTube. So it's another person in Italian. I'm still going to interview him in the channel. He said something that when God took him to hellfire, there is a particular sister she saw in hell. Listen to me. He said there is a particular sister she saw in hell. This sister is a Christian, like somebody who is serving God with all his heart. But when she gets to the gate of heaven, they look, they say, okay, you are safe. You know when they said you are safe, it means the heaven recognize her. But they now ask her, they said, where is the joy of your salvation? They ask him, where is the, they, they ask her, where is the joy of your salvation? Do you know what happened to her? Before she died, she was, she was moody. She was worried and she died in the process. It's a sister that you should be joyful. That is why it is not good not to be joyful always. If something happened to you, if you want to think about it, think about it immediately and take it off. Let the Holy Spirit take control of the heart. They ask him, they ask her, where is the joy of your salvation? Don't forget the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. The nine fruit. We have love, we have faith, we have patience, we have joy long suffering like that like that like that joy you see for you to be a christian it is not normal for you for your brethren to see you sad it's not normal so if we have been doing it before if i have been doing it before if you have been doing it before i am telling you this so that you can change from your ways because if you die at the point of not having that joy that time it will not be it will not be counted to you as joy or salvation normally a christian should die in joy then the evidence that you are true to a child of god is the joy of salvation if truly the holy spirit is inside you you will have the joy of salvation being perfect. The Bible talks about perfection in the speech. It means when you are talking to somebody, you have to be very careful of how you speak. If there is any way you lie, the Lord will count it there. That's why he said you will give account of everything that comes from your mouth. Every word you say. 
you will give account for it. So if you lie, or you say something negative, or you say something bad, you will give account of it. If you buy bad of your brother or your sister, you will give account of it. That is why he said in the Bible, he said, anyone that is perfect in the area of word is perfect in everything, everything. Because mostly this tongue, now it they cause problem most time. So my beloved brother and sister, as God be with you. Perfection that Jesus Christ is talking about, it is not just a perfection of mouth, but perfection in dressing, perfection in speech, perfection in behavior, perfection in your character, perfection in your way of service. Even when you are in the church, when they ask you to stand up and sing, sing, when they they ask you to gather, gather. When they ask you to shout, shout. When they ask you to be silent, silent. Do say your, your own name, big pass. The where the level of area that devil has destroyed the church, he has started bringing pride into people. people. When they begin to say that they, we are the one that they used to trust in, that we are able to do this thing. Pride started from there. You have to be very, very, very careful if truly you want to make it to heaven. To heaven. There are many areas. There are many areas. What of in your, in your business area? When you are doing business, you bought the something at the age of 100 naira and you are selling it 200 naira. Okay, no problem. But what is not the problem is that that you have to the person that ah, if you know the price, I buy this thing. <laughs> In fact, I'm I'm just I'm just giving you a small price. You don't lie. I'm just giving you a small price. If you know the way to buy this thing, I buy at the age of one fifty. I, I buy at the age of one sixty. You are lying. I'm just getting forty naira, naira, and you say you are going to heaven. Which heaven? Something happened to Peter, and Paul was angry. That is where you got to know that your actions speak in the kingdom of God. Peter was among the Gentiles. He was having conversation with them. And when Peter saw that the Christian group are coming, especially Paul is coming, he will now use Thai style, avoid that Gentiles. So that they will not say that, hey, ah, Peter, as the head of the church, as the, the captain of the apostles, why are you avoiding uh i mean why are you communicating with the gentiles so peter use time use wisdom to move and live where they are and paul saw it and paul was very provoking the spirit and he rebuked peter publicly that peter what are you teaching the people why are you playing hypocrisy game why can't you stay with them and keep talking with them why are you trying to pretend as if you are avoiding them? It means hypocrite can also endanger your soul. I pray that the God Almighty, who is a God of perfection, will perfect our life in Jesus' name. I say we perfect our life in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I'm going to stop here. We are going to continue next time we are still going to continue on the area of perfections because there are things that we need to reveal to ourselves there are things we need to be out to reveal to ourselves do you know that you have to be perfect even in your look as a christian you have to be perfect in your look you must not use your ring to your body you must not uh, use powder. Do you know powder is a sin? Do you know perfume is a sin? 
Do you know short leaves? For you to be wearing short leaves, I mean, armless clothes, as a woman, is a sin. Even as a man going out, is a sin. Do you know in this sense, clothes is a, a sin? Do you know what you think is a sin? Do you know how you behave to your children? You can also say that. Your children did not offend you. You give her a gift because of a little thing that you can simply talk and advise. Something that is meaningless. You begin to beat the child as if he's a, he's a thief. Do you know that it's also a sin? There are many things that you are doing that is a sinful thing. Do you know trying to control your husband in, in the house is a sin? It can take you to hell. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever is in our life that can take us to hell, the Lord God Almighty will remove it and uproot it in Jesus' name. God bless you. God be with you. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Before you go, please kindly subscribe to this channel. Because there are many revelational messages you needed to hear. And that is going to change your life. Subscribe to this button and press the notification button. I pray the Lord God will bless you and be with you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye.